AIHA just recently commissioned the salary and compensation survey. Uh, the information that we have today is literally hot off the press. We just got a preliminary report last week. So more data will be coming out, but we did want to share what we learned to date. Um, little background, we had about 2,350 people uh, participate in the survey. It represents about 25% of the AIHA membership. Uh, we opened our data collection between March and April, actually closed at the very beginning of May. Um, and this is for the year ending uh, December 31 of 2018. Participants uh, range in age from 21 to 93. And so these are actually active professionals still working in the field. Uh, and our previous salary and compensation survey was completed back in 2013. So this is about a five year later snapshot of, of where we are. Uh, keep in mind, these are broad general averages across the entire um, response. So you'll see a bunch of different averages based on different slices of the data. Um, and as we continue to dive into that information, we'll be providing more data in some of these specific categories. So a little bit about the participation stats, so who participated in, in our survey. By age, we actually had a really good representation. We had a good number of young professionals, 20%. Uh, not surprising that our more seasoned professionals, 56 to 65, is a larger portion. This kind of mirrors the overall AIHA membership. We do have an older, more seasoned uh, membership. And then we have a very seasoned 6% uh, at 66 or older. When we look at the education level, this directly mirrors what we see within the AIJ membership. So highly educated, 60% have a master's degree, another 8% have their doctorate. And actually what we've seen in some of the data is that, of course, with the higher degree, your salary and compensation rises. Participation by certification. So 64% of our uh, respondents have the CIH, another 38% have the, the CSP. There will be some overlap there and we're going to be digging into that a little bit deeper to see what the, what the breaks are. Um, and just under 20% have no certification and so we're actually going to be taking a look at what does certification do to the salary and compensation of an individual. Participation by region, so we also take a look at the, the country where people are from, uh, the darker areas are where we had stronger participation. Um, this also kind of mirrors where people are located just generally within the membership. So our South Atlantic region, there was a 17% um, of the overall responses came from this region. Uh, when you get up into New England, it's about 4%. East, South, Central is another 4%. Our friends to the North Canada, we had about an 8% uh, response rate for them. And then outside of the US and Canada was another 4%. So we do have a little bit of data there, but not a wide, uh, a wide cut. So now we get into our average base salary, average variable compensation. So overall, uh, what we found was that for a base compensation uh, came in at about 110,000 overall. When you look at the United States, it goes up a couple thousand dollars. Uh, and so you can see where the spread was. When you get into Canada and outside of the US and Canada, there definitely is a, a difference within the base salary. Compensation seems to be stable. That could be anything from medical to retirement plan to uh, dental, uh, even bonuses. Um, so we're actually looking deeper into that of what really makes up that, that variable. When we look at our previous salary and compensation survey from 2013, we see about an in increase on average of about 5,000 in the base salary, but the variable uh, compensation has gone up about a little bit more than double. So again, that could be medical, it could be retirement uh, plan, 401k, whatnot. Now we're taking a look at job role. Obviously management has the highest potential, um, so we're seeing the, the highest average there. Uh, the lowest actually comes in down at education, training, academic world. Uh, and when we compare that with our data from 2013, you can kind of see where the increase lies. So there was a noticeable increase in management in that other category. Other would actually include a marketing and sales position. We're, we're drilling into that a little bit deeper to what actually makes up that other. 
Um, what we've noticed in research is it stayed pretty flat, and actually in our, in our education training category, we did see an average decrease. Um, this might have been a smaller uh, pool of individuals that, that reported. Uh, so we're looking at that a little bit more to see what, what is behind that. But those are the, your overall job role averages. Let me get into certification. Now what a great picture to show that says, hey, once you become certified, you're gonna make $40,000 more uh, than not being certified. There's a lot of data behind this. What we see in that, that CIH category of who has their CIH, the average person has that for 16 years in this data set. So keep that in mind when you're looking at this number, you're also looking at years of experience that, that kind of offset this. But when you do look at the no certifications, and we could probably extrapolate that it's gonna be a younger professional, you can kind of take a look at that, what that annual growth would be at that level versus somebody with a CIH. So we're, we're drilling into this. This is something very interesting uh, to us to see what certification does to the salary and compensation. Then we can look at the average base salary across all of the, the different regions. Again, the, the regions that are lighter versus darker are the response rate. The darker ones, we just have more data in those areas. What we found was that the west, north, central, where we are here in, in Minneapolis, has the lowest per region, about 103,000. Uh, the highest is our Pacific region. I don't think there's any surprise there at 122. So mostly we see that, that it's there's fairly stable across the regions, but there is some differences, um, plus or minus. Our friends to the north, again, it's about 88, so we're seeing uh, less in the north and outside of the U.S. A little bit better, but less than what you'd see in the United States. So we get into some starting salaries in IH. Everyone should be aware of our um, I Am IH campaign. Um, really attracting the young professionals. We, what we wanted to find out is what is the starting salary? Somebody coming out of school, no certification, what does that starting salary look like for someone? So we looked into our professionals that responded that were age 35 or less, that had five years of experience or less, and we asked them, what was your starting salary when you came out of school? So we have a place to start. And what we found was the average is about 60,000 coming out of school. So this would typically be no certification, um, no experience. Uh, a little bit less in Canada and actually uh, much different outside of the U.S., but that data pool is pretty small, so we have to take that into consideration. Um, but we do now have a, a, a kind of a range for our starting salary that we can now go promote as a part of our recruitment into the profession. And then we can look at the average starting salary per region. Uh, actually, our middle Atlantic, where we see New York, Pennsylvania, actually has the least. Uh, 52 as a starting salary. The highest again goes over to the Pacific Coast and that's upwards of 67,000. Canada, we're coming in at about 50. And outside the US is actually much less. So what's next? We're still digging into this data. Like I said, we just got the initial uh, information last week. We are gonna be putting together uh, a summary statement. So everybody that participated in this survey will get a copy of that. We're actually then going to release a full study of what we learned. But the most interesting thing is that everybody has their own path. Everybody wants to know what their specific salary range should be. So we're developing an online interactive calculator. We expect this to go live in July. So you'll be able to go in and put in your actual information and compare that with professionals um, that responded. Uh, now as you get kind of more focus in your area, there might be a little uh, less data, so you might see a different range, but it gives you an area to start to drill into where your salary is compared to your peers. This will be an exclusive member benefit. I hope everyone in the room is a member of AIHA. Uh, if you're not, come to the AIHA booth, talk to us, we'll set you up, but uh, when we release this uh, in July, members can go in and have access to that data. So. Um, we're pretty excited about that.